brothers and sisters. Thank you. Uh, you need the Spanish translation? Yes? Sigma. Yes. 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 Yes, yes. Uh, translation. <laughs> translation. Yes, translation. Yes. Okay. So, uh, this evening, our plan is to give a brief insight, a brief introduction to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Entonces, esta noche, nosotros vamos a ver algunas, eh, algo sobre. Eh, So, nowadays yoga has become very popular. Actualmente yoga es muy popular. And uh, the original, uh, most ancient and popular text on the subject of yoga is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Entonces, eh, Yoga Sutras de Patanjali es un texto antiguo y es donde nos explica el yoga. Now, uh, myself, I come from the tradition called Vedanta. Bhakti Vedanta. Yo mismo vengo de una tradición que se llama Vedanta, que es el Bhakti Vedanta. So Vedanta is very interesting uh, in that uh, Vedanta is a tradition that looks at all the main philosophical systems of the ancient Vedic Aryan culture of India and compares them and then takes the essence. Entonces, Vedanta eh, es eh, la tradición donde se compara y se extrae toda la esencia de lo que es eh, los Vedas. So, in Vedic culture, there are um, six classical philosophers. Entonces, en la cultura védica hay seis tipos de filosofía. That is called Nyai, the system, the school of logic. Está Nyai, que es el sistema de lógica. Then, Vaisheshik. Is the system of atomic theory. By the Then the next philosophical system in India is called Sankhya, which is a um, categorization of all the elements of the world, all the components that come together to make the world. Y Sankhya es toda la categorización de los elementos de lo que está conformado el mundo. And the fourth system of Vedic philosophy is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Then there is the um, Purga Mimamsa, that is the theory of karma, of Jaini Mirishi. And Purva Mimamsa. It is the theory about karma. How to behave in such a way that you make only good karma for yourself. <laughs> and then the last system is Vedanta, which uh, analyzes all the other systems and then gives the conclusion. So I'm just illustrating the context. How, where the Yoga Sutras fits into our tradition of Vedanta. So, um, the scholars say that Patanjali wrote this work about uh, 400 years BC. Entonces, eh, Patanjali escribe estos, estas escrituras uh, 400 años después. Before, yes. Uh, so it's very old. Uh, but those who are in the tradition, they say that it's actually much older than that. You know, there's always a discrepancy between traditional religion and the academics study. You know? So the word uh, sutra refers to uh, an aphorism, a very short phrase which contains a lot of uh, information but in very few words. So a person can memorize the whole system of philosophy 
in like a zip file, you know, <laughs> or everything condensed in a few words. Entonces una persona puede memorizar, puede tener todo este conocimiento como en un eh, archivo comprimido, así es un sutra. And sutra also, the word sutra also means thread. También la palabra sutra significa mm -hmm. el, 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 el hilo. So, um, each one of the aphorisms is connected to the next one, and so there's like a thread of idea, the thread of idea going through them, joining them all together. Entonces, así cada concepto, cada idea está unido a través de un hilo. Uh, so, um, the Yoga Sutra Patanjali is 196 sutras. Entonces, los Yoga Sutras de Patanjali en realidad son 190 sutras. And it's divided into four chapters. Y está dividido en cuatro capítulos. The first chapter is called Samadhi Pada. El primer capítulo es llamado Samadhi Pada. And uh, Pada means a chapter, and Samadhi means trance. So the first chapter is on the subject of trance. Pada significa capítulo y Samadhi significa trance. Entonces todo este, este primer capítulo trata acerca del trance. Uh, and it, it analyzes uh, different levels of trance and how different levels of trance can give you different degrees of insight and knowledge into reality. Entonces, eh, en este trance existen diferentes niveles y cada nivel te puede dar diferente conocimiento. Diferentes, eh, ¿cómo es esta palabra en español? ¿no? Eh, puntos de vista. Puntos de vista, diferentes mm -hmm. puntos de vista. Uh, just like if you have binoculars, if you focus them, you can focus nearby, or you can change the focus and look further, or you can change and look further like that. So each type of samadhi allows you to look further and further. Yeah. Entonces cada trance, cada nivel de este samadhi nos hace eh, ver más profundamente diferentes puntos de vista, visión, así como unos bin binoculares que tú los puedes graduar y los ves ya sea de más cerca o más más lejos, más más lejos, más más lejos. So the second chapter is called the sadhana pada. That means the chapter on practice. <laughs> What you have to do practically in your life to get the experience of samadhi trance. Entonces el segundo capítulo es acerca de esas danas, de las prácticas. ¿Qué debes tú realizar para poder entrar al samadhi o al trance? So there you find the description of astanga, the eight limbs of yoga. Y entonces ahí tú encuentras la descripción de astanga, es decir, de los ocho partes del yoga. Then the third chapter is called vibhuti pada. El tercer capítulo se llama vibhuti pada. So vibhuti means powers. Vibhuti significa poderes. So uh, from the practice of the yoga sadhana, you can develop various extraordinary abilities called siddhis. Entonces de la práctica de sadhana tú puedes desarrollar bastantes habilidades que se llaman siddhis. Ah. So you may become very light and start to float. <laughs> Levitation. Puedes volverte tan liviano que puedes empezar a flotar a levitar. And you may be able to um, see your uh, past life. También puedes ver tu vida pasada. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be able to read another person's mind. También puedes leer la mente de otra persona. So these are just a few examples of the powers that can come. Entonces estos son algunos ejemplos de aquellos poderes que pueden venir. There are eight main powers, anima, lagima, garima, anima, mohima, garima, lagima, prapti, ishita, vasita, kama, vasayata. These are the eight main cities. Existen ocho poderes, ocho principales cities, que se llama, que es las que mencionaba anima, By these, by these powers, you can fulfill any desire you have, you can make it come true. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand that Patanjali explains that these powers are not the goal of yoga. They are actually obstacles. <laughs> Son obstáculos. Mm -hmm. They're like temptations. Son como tentaciones. Uh -huh. 
If you become attracted to them, then you cannot come to your goal of realizing your soul. Because the powers are related to the acquirements of the temporary physical world. And that is all like only temptation, actually. Entonces esos poderes son como sentirse atraído por, por el mundo material en sí, ¿no? So then, uh, the last chapter is called Kaivalya Pada. Y el último capítulo se llama Kaivalya Pada. And Kaivalya means um, unadulterated, mm-hmm. unmixed. Eh, Kaivalya significa mm, eh, no mezclado, no adulterado. Mm-hmm. That is, at the moment, the consciousness of our soul is mixed in with the material world. So when you separate your soul from the physical plane, that's called kaivalya, unmixed with material things. So that is the state of liberation. Because it's considered, if you don't come to that state of consciousness before the end of this life, then you have to take birth again. Reincarnation will take place until you come into that state. Okay, so now you have the overview of the whole book. 196 sutras, four chapters, you know the shape of it. Entonces quiere dice que ahora todos tenemos una vista panorama general de todo el libro de los de los yoga sutras 190 sutras con cuatro capítulos. So um, let's look at uh, some of the uh, details. Vamos a ver ahora algunos de los detalles. In Ashtanga Yoga. There are uh, Ashta Anga means eight limbs. Vamos a ver algo de la Ashtanga Yoga. Quiere decir que Ashta quiere decir ocho partes. So those limbs are Yam, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyan, and Samadhi. This is yes. So you have studied Sutra. <laughs> Estos ocho pasos son So we'll just look at them one by one and uh, you'll see that there are principles here which are common to all the religions of the world. Entonces vamos a ir viendo cada uno de ellos y van a darse cuenta que en realidad estos son principios en cada religión del mundo. What people call the moral principles or ethical principles of religion, actually that's just the first steps of the, the path of yoga. So first, yam and niyam. Yam means restraints, some uh, self-control, some re- self-restraint that you have to exercise in your life, that is called yam. Yam quiere decir es el primer paso, el primer eh, paso, rama. Rama, rama, que quiere decir que uno debe eh, contraerse, autocontrolarse, controlarse en la vida. And then niyam means some uh, observances, five things, there's five restraints and five observances that you have to observe in your life. So some negative things restraining and some positive things you have to do. Entonces, mi llama quiere decir que son cinco cosas que uno debe observar y cinco cosas que uno debe observar. Cinco cosas observar de una forma positiva y cinco cosas de restricción en forma de las cosas negativas. Five yams and five niyams makes ten. So this is like the ten commandments of yoga. <laughs> Eso es como los diez mandamientos de yoga. <laughs> so the first one is called ahimsa means uh, non-violence, don't give pain to any living being. Now, 
Actually, each one of the yams and niyams, if you follow it in your life, there's a particular benefit that comes from following that particular practice. Si ustedes realizan alguna específica práctica de yam o niyam, tiene un beneficio específico particular. So, when a person does the ahimsa, non-violence, it's not meant to be only physical, but also mental as well. Quiere decir que si una persona está realizando ahimsa, no significa que se no haga una violencia física, sino que tampoco haga una violencia mental. That means that we give up envy towards others. Eso significa que nosotros dejamos la envidia hacia otros. Uh, because this, when we feel envy, this is actually our karma from a previous life making its appearance. Es decir, que cuando nosotros sentimos envidia hacia otra persona, es en nuestro karma pasado, nuestra vida previa, que eso viene de nuestra vida previa. You see, if you meet someone and you get into some conflict and you, you are thinking, this is my enemy, actually, this is your previous life karma coming and taking over your activities. Es decir, que cuando tú, tú conoces a otra persona y inmediatamente sientes una eh, enemistad, una eh, pelea, eso quiere decir que es de un karma pasado que ahorita se está manifestando. So, if we want to become free from past karma and have a peaceful mind, we must never have hostility towards any person. Si nosotros queremos estar libres del karma y no queremos sufrir ninguna de esas reacciones, now, if we go into this more deeply, you'll see that uh, envy is, can be something very, very slight. For example, if you think you have this idea in the mind and Everyone has in this room. They're thinking, they see another person and they think, I am better than you. Uh, if, or even, I am more special than you. So we have to be honest. This actually is a mentality comes from Rajagun. It's a passion in the mind. Because, you see, every soul is in one small particle of the energy of God. So we're all the same and we're all spiritual. Entonces, todos somos únicos y todos somos espirituales. So, if I am thinking, eh, oh, I am better than you, that means I am not seeing that you are a soul, I am seeing your body. Mm -hmm. So, that is ignorance on my part. Mm -hmm. And also, I am thinking I am not the soul, also, I am this body. And we are comparing only bodily activities. So, you have forgotten yourself and the other person also, both. Entonces, si nosotros sentimos algo de envidia, esto significa que estamos viendo el cuerpo material, estamos haciendo una eh, valoración solo del cuerpo material y no estamos identificando que la otra persona es también un ser espiritual. Entonces, estamos negando que es un ser espiritual y del mismo modo estamos, no estamos entendiendo que nosotros somos un ser eh, espiritual. Entonces, estamos teniendo una valoración a nivel material. So, ahimsa, non-violence, it seems like a very simple thing, okay, I don't beat anyone. But actually, it has very deep psychological implications. So, when we remember that, then we can remain alert and awake. I am soul, you are soul, you are soul, and we all part of good, and we remain peaceful and no enmity. Entonces, cuando nosotros recordamos que somos eh, partículas de Dios, entonces vamos a, eh, vamos a identificar: yo soy un alma espiritual, él es un alma espiritual, todos somos un alma espiritual que pertenecemos 
a Dios y entonces vamos a poder vivir en armonía y en paz. Then the next one is called satya, truthfulness. Entonces lo siguiente es satya, la veracidad. To always speak the truthful in a truthful way, never tell any lie. Quiere decir que ustedes hablen de una forma verdadera, nunca decir una mentira. And if we observe this truthfulness very strictly, then when we um, perform an activity, then the result we want to get from that activity it will come. But the person who is engaged in uh, lies, they always start one activity and something unexpected happens to them. Entonces, cuando nosotros observamos esta veracidad, la profundidad, cuando nosotros hagamos alguna actividad, vamos a conseguir el fruto de esa actividad. Pero si nosotros empezamos esa actividad con mentiras, entonces va a pasar algo siempre inesperado. Then, so, ahimsa, satya, then astea, not, it means no stealing. Entonces estamos con ajinza, satia y asterio. Quiere decir que no robes. No robes. And that means also don't take more than you need. Eso también significa. Because the Vedas say if you take more than you need for your life, you are stealing actually. Entonces esto quiere decir que no tomes más de lo que necesitas. Porque si estás tomando más de lo que necesitas, los Vedas dicen que también esto es una forma de robar. It means to give up greediness in your mind for things that you don't have and for things that belong to others. <laughs> you see someone with a very nice car, you I want to go like this. This is actually the subtle psychological stealing. Entonces quiere decir que nosotros dejemos esta codicia de desear las cosas ajenas a las cosas que no tenemos. Por ejemplo, cuando vemos un auto que psicológicamente tenemos esta codicia y deseamos tener And what happens when you perfect that uh, yang of asteya, non-stealing, then you discover that in your life, whatever you need, it comes to you automatically without any effort. Entonces, cuando tú observas este asteja, asteja, o asteja, 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 entonces tú vas a darte cuenta que en tu vida se manifiesta automáticamente todo lo que tú necesitas. Then, the next one is a brahmacharya. Y la siguiente es Brahmacharya. So Brahmacharya means the sexual continence. Celibacy. Brahmacharya quiere decir una abstinencia sexual, el celibato. Uh -huh. So, uh, for those who are married, uh, they can uh, have sex for procreation, but okay. not recreation. <laughs> Aquellos que son casados pueden practicar el sexo para hacer una para reproducción. Pero no así para la recreación. So what happens is when the sexual energy is kept inside the body, it rises uh, to the brain, and then you get what is called virya, uh, that is a, a vigor. You become vigorous. Entonces cuando esta energía sexual tú la contienes eh, desde tu cuerpo sube a tu cerebro, a tu, a tu cerebro y de ahí se, esta energía se convierte en virya. Virya quiere decir Vigorosidad. Ah, yes. You have great energy. You can, and also from vigor comes memory, power of memory, strong memory. You can remember many thousands of uh, Vedic mantras. <laughs> And also, a, a very good um, side effect of the brahmacharya is that when you give someone an instruction, there's a power in that instruction that they can follow it. Incluso este poder de la brahmacharya, del celibato, tiene un efecto secundario. Es decir, que cuando tú das una instrucción, tienes el poder de que esa persona que recibe la instrucción pueda seguirla. So if the, that means if there's a teacher. And he does not have a strong brahmacharya. He speaks, but the students can follow. And when someone has strong brahmacharya, then he speaks, and the students they get the power to follow the instruction. Yeah. 
cuando él habla, sus estudiantes pueden seguirlo, pero si él no sigue un celibato cuando el profesor habla, los estudiantes no entienden y no lo siguen. So then the last one is called uh, Aparigraha. El último es Aparigraha. Yeah, it means uh, to give up possessiveness. Eso significa abandonar toda posesión. You know, oh no, not the possession, possessiveness. Mm -hmm. Si no, es abandonar el... La posesividad. La posesividad. Ah, yes, yes. Because, let's say you have a house... Uh, you have a table, chair, you have things in your home, but you don't have to leave them, but you have to leave the feeling this is all belongs to me, this is mine. Because Because our soul is just passing through this world. Like each life is a one step of our journey. So it's like a hotel. If you stay one night in a hotel, you cannot think this bed is mine, this table is mine, this chair is mine. Because you have to go the next day. So it is said when a person has become perfect in leaving the feelings of possessiveness, then they can look inside their mind and they can see the history of their past life. Entonces, Not one life, many lives. Entonces, estas personas que abandonan este sentimiento de la posesividad pueden ellos eh, hacer una mirada interna y ver cómo eh, de vidas pasadas, pueden ver sus vidas pasadas, no solo de una, sino de muchas vidas pasadas. So, that was uh, five yams, now we look at five niams. Esas fueron las cinco eh, yam, yamas y vamos a ver ahora las cinco yamas. The first one is shocha, means cleanliness. La primera es socha, quiere decir limpieza. So someone who is doing the yoga sadhana, they will uh, take a bath morning, noon and evening, three times a day, always clean. And body clean and clothes clean always. Entonces aquellos que están haciendo el yoga asana, por lo menos se bañan tres veces al día, tienen la, el cuerpo limpio y la ropa limpia. Because after some time of doing this, you realize no matter how much you clean your body, You realize it's never clean. <laughs> it's like trying to wash coal. Aguas can, aguas coal. You know coal is black. You light the fire with coal. It's like a black rock. You put it in the fire. Ah, yeah. So when you try to clean the coal, but no matter how much you clean, it's still black is coming out. <laughs> so you wash the body, then four hours later again the smell is bad. Yeah. And you wash again, again it smells bad. <laughs> And then you uh, begin to become detached from, you think, when ignorance is there, this body is such a very good thing. But as you become more and more purified, then you realize, oh, it's like a confinement for the soul, and I have to transcend the body. Entonces, dentro de la ignorancia, nosotros pensamos que, bueno, este cuerpo eh, puede eh, ser limpio, pero cuando salimos de esta ignorancia, nos damos cuenta que este cuerpo realmente es simple. And when that realization comes that the soul, the soul is really clean, but the body is never clean, then you never try to, that your body will try to enjoy someone else's body. Because if your body is not clean, their body is also not clean. Entonces, so it supports the um, overcoming uh, lust. 
Entonces, cuando tienes la realización de que tu cuerpo nunca está limpio, pero que tu alma es limpia, entonces tú puedes, eh, cuando tienes esta realización, pero mientras no tengas esta realización, tú también vas a tratar de disfrutar el otro cuerpo, pero así como tu cuerpo está sucio, igualmente el cuerpo del otro está sucio. Entonces, esto se llama la lujuria. Then the next one, the niyam is a santosh, means uh, be satisfied. Practice being in any situation, even something goes wrong, you know, just be satisfied. Santosh, quiere decir que eh, estás tú satisfecho, que no importa cu cuál sea la situación, incluso si es una mala situación, tú igualmente continúas tus prácticas y te sientes satisfecho. And one who practices being satisfied in all circumstances, They be, uh, achieve the state of uh, contentedness, happiness. Entonces, cuando tú practicas estar satisfecho en cualquier situación, no importa cuál sea, entonces viene a ti la eh, sat, eh, contento, estar contento. Then the next one is called tapa. Tapa means uh, uh, austerity. Y la siguiente niyam se llama tapa, que significa la austeridad. It means especially that the senses are always going out and they want to enjoy so to check if this force of the gunas to go against this force of the gunas is the uh, tapa austerity entonces es, esto vamos a entender de la siguiente forma que nuestros sentidos siempre tratan de ir ser afuera fuera de control y el ir eh, en contrario de esta corriente que los sentidos quieren salirse se llama austeridad se llama tapa So uh, the tapa purifies us of faults that we have in our behavior or in our thinking that we have acquired by doing some sinful activities in previous lives. Entonces, realizar esta tapa, no, tapa esta austeridad, nos purifica de, eh, de nuestras actividades pasadas o de nuestros pensamientos pasados. Then the next one is called swadhyay. Swa means self. And Adhyay means study. So Adhyay is the next paso que Swa significa el ser y Adhyay significa estudio. So the exact definition is that you yourself you study the Vedic literature. Esta definición significa que tú mismo estudias la literatura védica. And the other meaning is that you study yourself. You come to understand about your own mind through japa. Japa means by sitting in meditation and repeating mantra. Then you learn so much about your own mind. También tiene otro significado que quiere decir que tú te estudias a ti mismo, estudias tu mente, haces japa, que quiere decir escuchar el mantra y a través de este mantra tú puedes tener este conocimiento de tu ser. Because people generally they think that they're in control of their own thoughts. Porque la gente en general piensa que está en control de sus pensamientos. Oh, then just sit down and try to fix your mind on that for five minutes, and then you discover you are not, you cannot control your mind is going everywhere like the wind. Esta es la esta es la prueba de que tú te sientes por lo menos cinco minutos y empiezas a repetir el mantra. Si tú puedes controlar tu mente y repetir el mantra, entonces la gente en general no puede realizar porque tu mente se va a cualquier lado. But gradually as you practice. You learn to understand how your own psychology is functioning. Because there is the mind, and then the intelligence, and then the ego, then there are different layers of your psychology. So as your meditation goes deeper, you come to see all the different aspects of your conscious, and also afterwards your subconscious mind also. Entonces, quiere decir que existen muchas capas, ¿no? Está la mente, está la inteligencia, está el ego. Entonces, a medida que uno va profundizando en su meditación, tú puedes ir dándote cuenta de las diferentes capas que tiene tu subconsciente y hasta tu conciencia. And you gradually come to find your soul. Y así, gradualmente, tú puedes encontrar tu alma. And then you can go further also and find God. Incluso puedes avanzar mucho más de que sí encontrar a Dios. So, Patanjali he says that the result of Swadhyay, doing Japa, Japa meditation, is Ishtadev Samprayogaha, 
that you meet with your Ishtadev, that means your beloved God. Ishta, Ishta means uh, for whom you have love and affection. And Dev means God. So that God who is very dear to you, Samprayogara, you directly meet with God. So actually yoga is not an atheistic philosophy. It is a theistic. And then the last niyam, number five niyam, is called Ishwara Pranidhan. That means to have a spirit of a surrender to the will of God. So, the effect of Ishwara Pranidhan, surrender to God, Patanjali said, Samadhi Siddhi Ishwara Pranidhan at. at. That means from the surrender to God, you attain Samadhi Siddhi, the perfection of trance. Entonces, este último día, Patanjali dice que a través de esta rendición a Dios, tú puedes obtener el Samadhi Siddhi, quiere decir esa perfección del trance. So, the goal of yoga is to attain trance. Ah, entonces, el, el objetivo último de yoga es obtener trance, mm -hmm. Samadhi. But without the spirit of surrender, devotion to God, you cannot attain trance. So, an atheist cannot actually be a yogi, because he can never attain perfection. And he is not following the yams, niyams, which are compulsory, the first compulsory part of yoga. Entonces, por ejemplo, entonces, a través de la rendición no puede obtener so, the Yoga Sutras don't tell us very much about Ishwara or God. But there are just a few sutras give some indication, which is very practical and useful. Algunos sutras nos dan alguna eh, visión que es muy práctica. Uh, first of all, it is said that klesha, karma, vipak, asaya, apari, mrishtha, um, purush, vishesh, ishwara. It's a definition of ishwara. Entonces, Word. a través de este verso en sánscrito de klesha, da alguna definición de lo que es Dios, de lo que Except es Ishwara. It means that Ishwara is, a, is an individual conscious being. Purush Vishesh. Purush means a person, personality. Vishesh means individual. And this individual conscious being was Klesha Karma Viparashaya never touched by uh, karma or the results of karma also. So a fully transcendental person. Now the significance of this uh, sutra is that there were some sages in India and they used to think when you meditate then you become God. Entonces el significado de este sutra quiere decir que algunos yogis, por ejemplo en India, meditan, meditaban y decían que bueno, a través de esa meditación podía ser Dios. But the Patanjali is saying, no, it will not happen. Why? Because if you have karma and you are trying to get free, but God is that person who never had any karma. Y entonces Patanjali decía, no, esto tú no puedes alcanzar a ser Dios. ¿Por qué? Porque esta entidad suprema, 
Pero nunca has tocado por el karma. Y en cambio tú sí estás tocado por el karma. Then Patanjali explains that um, Tasya Vachaka Ha Pranavaha means God is indicated by the syllable Aum. Entonces quiere decir a través de este verso, quiere decir que Dios está indicado a través de esta sílaba que es Aum. This is A. O. Mm. Three letters. A, U, M, O. Tres letras quiere decir A, U, M. And uh, Patanjali explains that Taj Japas Tad Baba Tana means that you should utter the syllable O. And as you are repeating, meditate on the meaning of this syllable. That this syllable means Ishwara God, He is transcendental, He is the Guru, of, like a teacher of everyone. Like that, one should repeat the syllable and meditate on the meaning. Entonces, quiero decir que, Tanja decía, que Tanja está quiere decir que cuando tú repitas esta sílaba de so um, in the commentary, uh, some people say the commentary was written by Patanjali himself, and some say it was written by his disciple. Uh, but in the main uh, commentary of, of Yoga Sutras, there it is said that Om is a name of God, and it's like a placeholder. That in the Vedas there are many names of God, and you can use any of those names. But Om is like the uh, generic name. But you can use other names like uh, Narayan, Govinda, Gopal, Krishna for Japa meditation. Entonces, en el comentario, unos dicen que está escrito por el mismo Patanjali, o el comentario que está escrito por sus discípulos. Quiere decir que este Om es, un, es otro nombre de Dios que es de una forma genérica, pero también puede ser utilizado otros nombres como Naraya, como Govinda, en la meditación. So, in the commentary on the sutras, it is explained that the reason why you get perfection in your trance by uh, repeating the name of God and surrender in a mood of surrender. Entonces, en el este and the, so the answer to this question is uh, by vishesh bhakti by intense devotion then something comes called anugra we would say in English grace Yes, yes. Because to attain the perfect samadhi is very difficult by your own strength. But when you have the spirit of devotion to God, then by His strength He pulls you into samadhi. <laughs> quickly, quickly He can pull you into samadhi. And that is called anugra, grace. Por tu propio esfuerzo va a ser muy difícil, pero cuando tú, eh, eh, cuando eh, Dios mm -hmm. ve tu, tu, tu esfuerzo, entonces Él da a Nubra, te da esa gracia y Él a través de su, de su poder te jala para que tú obtengas este Samadhi perfecto. So you can understand that yoga originally was a very devotional practice. Entonces ustedes pueden entender que originalmente el yoga es una práctica devocional. Now, uh, we have discussed yam and niyam, then there is an asana. Entonces hemos hablado de yam y niyam, y ahora vamos a hablar de asana. So, the potentially said that stira sukam asana means to be very still and to be comfortable, to not feel any aches and pains. That is called the asana. Entonces, Patanjali describe este asana como 
que está en una forma quieta, de una forma confortable. So nowadays many different postures are used for enhancing health. But uh, the yoga sutras are focused on meditation. So for meditation, you only have to be able to sit very still without moving and without, you know, fidgeting and without aches and pains here and there. So you can focus fully. Entonces actualmente hay muchas posturas que pueden mejorar tu salud. Pero para la meditación deben ser posturas en donde tú no tengas y no sientas ningún dolor y no te estés moviendo así, ¿está? Si no te puedes estar muy concentrado. Then the next st stage is called pranayama. Ayam means to uh, extend. Ayam significa expansion. Extend. So you breathing, you your cycle of breathing and then holding the breath and then exhaling, you slowly, slowly increase the length of time. Entonces al respirar tú que haces suavemente tú puedes extender el tiempo por el proceso de inhalación retención y después a la exhalación uno puede controlar el tiempo yes and the reason is this that your breathing your, uh, is the function of what is called pran there's an energy moving in the body called pran and that uh, is the controlling your breathing And the pran is also uh, uh, connected to your mind. So when uh, breathing is erratic or fast, then the mind becomes disturbed. And when the breathing becomes very slow, then the mind becomes very steady and peaceful. Entonces, el respirar es también el, es el prana. Prana es la energía que está en el cuerpo. Entonces, cuando nosotros respiramos y controlamos este prana, que el prana tiene una relación directa con la mente, entonces cuando nuestra respiración es agitada, entonces nuestra mente se agita, pero cuando nuestra respiración es suave, entonces nuestra mente está también quieta. Está so, tranquila. the purpose of pranayama is to make the mind become steady. Entonces el propósito del pranayama quiere, quiere es que la mente esté tranquila, fija. When, when your mind is disturbed, then your breathing becomes faster. Cuando tu mente está perturbada, entonces tu respiración se agita. If you are a policeman, you know this. <laughs> si son policías, ustedes saben esto. Because when the police are interrogating someone, you know, and they're watching to see if the person is lying, their breathing will go faster. Entonces, because they are nervous when they're lying. Entonces, mm -hmm. el puerto, si son policías, se dan cuenta de esto. Entonces, cuando hacen un interrogatorio a una persona, si esta persona está respirando, aceleradamente quiere decir que está mintiendo entonces a nivel nervioso empieza a agitarse entonces quiere decir que miente uh, we can try a small experiment you see I want you to focus on this on fully put your mind focused on this fully for just five seconds are you ready? prepare yourself entonces quiere decir que vamos a hacer un pequeño experimento de que nosotros nos enfoquemos exclusivamente en el objeto que él tiene por cinco minutos. No Segundos. Yes, okay. Be ready, be ready. After three. Entonces estén listos. Después del tres vamos a. One, two, three. Okay. Now I ask you to focus your mind. I didn't tell you to stop breathing, but when I said one, two, three, you went. <laughs> Entonces cuando les dije uno, dos, tres para que se enfoquen en el objeto no les dije pues para su respiración pero cuando les cuando automáticamente dijimos uno, dos, tres ustedes pararon. Huh? And you, I was going to, and you went. El and you stopped your breathing because there's connection. Fast breathing means disturb mind and stop breathing means mind focus. They're connected. Entonces eh, cuando cuando estás respirando aceleradamente es que tu mente está perturbada, pero cuando te, te concentras para tu respiración tu mente puede estar más estable. So, by pranayama the mind can become peaceful, then the next stage comes pratyahara. 
Entonces, a través del pranayama, tu mente puede quedarte en paz, tranquila. Y el siguiente se llama Patehara. When the mind is not steady, it's always thinking about something in the outside world. I want to eat this, I want to smell that, I want to touch this. <laughs> Yeah, you see? So when the mind is very, very steady, then you can withdraw your mind from thinking about the external objects and turn it facing inside. Actually, the word ahar means to eat or ingest. So actually, we, we don't only eat with the mouth, but we eat images through the eyes, we eat sounds through the ears. And then we become attached to those things, we want to experience them again and again, and that makes us do karma. So the word prati, the, the prefix prati in Sanskrit means uh, reverse. So it's not eating, it's the reverse of eating, the opposite. Instead of taking everything in, just push everything out. All the images and experiences, we take them out of the mind. Then the next stage is called dharana, concentration. When the mind is peaceful, you can focus on one object. And the Patanjali is recommending the vibration of God's name. Y Patanjali recomienda la vibración de los nombres de Dios. And if the mind can be fixed on that one object for uh, 12 seconds. Entonces si la mente puede enfocarse en un objeto durante 12 segundos. Without moving here and there. Sin moverse de aquí y allá. Then it becomes the state of mind called Arana. So actually, there are very few people in the world who experience the dharana concentration. And if dharana will go on 12 times, so 12 times 12. Twelve times 12 seconds, then it turns into the state of dhyana meditation. Entonces, si hace es solamente hacer 12 por 12, entonces se convierte en dhyana, mm -hmm. en meditación. So, uh, the stage of actual dhyana meditation is very, very rare. Incluso mm -hmm. este estado de meditación es muy, muy raro. But it's another level of experience, completely different than what you are experiencing now. Es otro nivel completamente diferente de aquel que ahorita estás tú experimentando. And then when dharana, when dhyan becomes deeper, it turns into samadhi trance. And that trance is, that samadhi, that is actually the meaning of the word yoga. Okay. So that's overview of astanga yoga. Now, I just want to um, look at some of the implications, psychological implications of one sutra. The most famous sutra is the, the, the first chapter, second sutra, Yoga, Yoga's Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Este famoso sutra empieza de esta forma, es la más famosa. It means yoga, yoga's chitta vritti nirodha is the nirodha, the complete restraint of chitta vritti. Nirodha quiere decir que la completa restricción de, de chitta vritti. 
Chitta Vritti. Chitta means the mind fabric. Chitta significa la fabrication. Chitta. Chitta means mind fabric. Chitta. Chitta significa la mente, la fabrication de la mente. That is the, you know, what I mean by fact, I mean the mind stuff, the material that the mind is made from. Mm-hmm. You understand? Just like, um, the, uh, like, here I have a cup of water. So this water is made of oxygen and hydrogen. So oxygen and hydrogen, this is the stuff that the water is made of. So Patanjali is saying that your mind is actually a very fine element. Just like your body is made of earth and water and fire, the gross elements, so the psychological body is made of the element called chitta. So if you, if you imagine that your mind is like a water, very uh, liquid, and water moves. So a vritti means a movement within the mind stuff. So chitta vritti is like a wave. A, a, a modulation or oscillation within the fabric of the mind. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So let's say, let's just say, here is a, this is your chitta, your mind. And when there are some waves in this, then these are your thoughts and feelings. <laughs> so every thought, every feeling, every concept that you are experiencing is nothing but some wave in the chitta. Entonces, eso quiere decir que todo lo que piensas, todo lo que sientes, en realidad son olas que están dentro de tu chita. Now, the, the, um, so Patanjali, he explains that if, if there are no waves in your chitta, if there are no waves there, it becomes like a mirror. And you can see your soul. You can, your soul can see itself in the mind. Entonces Patanjali dice que si no hay estas olas de pensamientos y emociones, el plan no existe, quiere decir que se convierte como en un espejo. Entonces en este espejo tú puedes ver tu propio ser, tu alma espiritual. There's a, there's a mirror that I can look and I see how I am. So you can see your soul in the very clean uh, and undisturbed pure mind. Entonces tú puedes verte así a ti mismo en una mente que está muy limpia y no perturbada. Tú puedes verte a ti mismo. But when the mind becomes like this, <laughs> oh, what is happening? This kind of thing. Oh, okay. Okay, it's a, a different color wave. Entonces cuando en tu mente existen todas estas olas, estos movimientos o perturbaciones. You see, this, one, this one said, I want some chocolate. <laughs> this one said, I'm angry with my husband. <laughs> this one said, I want to have a holiday. <laughs> so many thoughts. <laughs> turbulence, yes. Turbulence. Yes, exactly. So, Patanjali says, as soon as there's turbulence in the mind, then Vritti Swarupyam Itaratra means the soul who is spiritual, then he identifies with the mind and body. So even though we are spiritual, but we think I am this mind and body due to the turbulence, that is the chitta vritti. 
Entonces, la, el alma, al ver todas estas turbulencias de pensamientos y emociones, se identifica y dice, bueno, yo soy este cuerpo y soy estos pensamientos y emociones. Mm -hmm. So, the mind also can uh, expand and contract. Igualmente, la mente puede expandirse y contraerse. Let's keep, let's keep some thoughts there, but now, mind is expanded, became bigger. Entonces, si ustedes ven, podemos ver que la mente se está expandiendo, se vuelve grande y nuestros pensamientos están ahí. So, when you have, you can have the same thoughts, but in a more expanded mind. But that uh, thought is not making a disturbance because it's very small compared to the volume. So the ratio between the uh, oscillation and the volume is a very low ratio. Entonces, se dan cuenta si ustedes eh, pueden estar ahí sus mismos pensamientos, pero son pequeños a comparación de todo el volumen que tienen so, una mente. The expanded uh, chitta is considered to be called, that is called sattvic, sattva, mode of goodness. A person can think, but the thoughts are not disturbing him, because he is very broad-minded. Entonces, esta mente expandida quiere decir que está en sattvica, es decir, la modalidad de la bondad. Entonces, estos pensamientos no le perturban. Mm -hmm. But let's say, if the chitta contracts, Uh, then this is called rajas, modern passion. Entonces, vamos a ver que si la chita se contrae, en realidad es mm -hmm. la modalidad de la acción. So then the thoughts, they, uh, just like if there's a fish in a big pond, he's moving around, he cannot make any disturbance. But if the fish is in this cup, then it becomes overflowing everywhere. Entonces, es como este ejemplo, si hay un pez que está en un estanque grande, entonces sus movimientos no van a ser perturbados. Pero si ese mismo pez está en este vaso pequeño, entonces donde se mueva va a ser salpicado o se va a salir de él. So when the chitta contracts, then the same thoughts cause the person to become disturbed. Entonces cuando la chitta se contrae, entonces estos mismos pensamientos hacen que esta persona se sienta perturbada. Then what happens if chitta will contract more? ¿Y qué pasa si esta chita se va contrayendo más? Like this. Oh, that's my stage. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tamas. <laughs> Entonces, ¿qué pasa cuando se contrae más esta chita? Vemos que los pensamientos y las emociones son mayores. Son the, now the chita has become so attractive and just fixed on one thing that even the functions of the mind They cannot function. They are uh, interfering with each other, and the person just I don't know what to do. I don't know what to compress. Yeah. So the person is ex extreme stress. Entonces, en esta contracción de la mente, nuestros pensamientos incluso están totalmente no no funcionan adecuadamente porque se están confundiendo. Entonces, eso nos causa a nosotros mucho mucho estrés. Y esta es la modalidad de la estrés. Now. The expansion and the contraction of the chitta takes place in the inner element which accommodates it that is called uh, uh, the ether or akash. Entonces, esta expansión y esta contracción de la chitta se, desa se, se desarrolla en un ambiente que se llama el éter o akash. Because movement needs some space to move. So these movements of the chitta take place in the element called akash. Entonces, este movimiento tanto de la expansión y la contracción necesita tener un espacio y este espacio se llama akash. So in Sanskrit, akash is also called uh, ka. Ka. Entonces, este akash igualmente en sánscrito es llamado ka. So when the, the chitta is contracted in the akash and becomes a very um, very disturbed like this then the word uh, for bad in Sanskrit is a do 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 so do ka that the, the Sanskrit word do ka means unhappiness or misery uh, but it literally means bad ether 
that your isa in which your chitta is resting has become so disturbed. So the word for unhappiness in Sanskrit, dukkha, exactly describes the what is going on physical chitta. Yeah, it's a metaphysical explanation. Can you explain? So and uh, entonces. Ka es la palabra, es el espacio en donde se desarrolla, o sea, en donde se contrae, eh, es el espacio donde se contrae la mente, ¿no? Entonces, cuando está completamente contaminada de nuestros pensamientos, de esta turbulencia, entonces se llama du. Du quiere decir que está sucio, que está contaminado. Entonces, du ka hace una explicación eh, mayor a que este éter de nuestro espacio, si este espacio está sucio, está contaminado y eso también está relacionado a la infelicidad. And in, in Sanskrit, uh, su, su means beautiful, sukha, and the word sukha means happiness. So, sukha means happiness, but it literally means beautiful isa. <laughs> Entonces, sukha, que es también en Sanskrit, que significa felicidad, su quiere decir hermoso, entonces quiere decir que su ka literalmente es su, un hermoso éter. Because your chitta became just like this, only the peaceful, peaceful ocean. Su ka. Su ka es expansión, o sea que son poquitos los pensamientos que están ahí y no perturban. So it's very important and very significant for everyone to understand What is happiness and distress? Entonces es muy importante y significativo que cada persona entienda qué es felicidad y qué es aflicción. Because uh, everyone is looking for happiness. Porque todos están buscando la felicidad. But who can define what it is? Pero quién puede definir la felicidad? <laughs> you see, when you focus your mind on something, then the chitta starts to expand. Entonces, cuando tú enfocas tu mente en algo, tu chita empieza a expandirse. So, someone will say, I asked some, I just came from Miami, I stayed with the one friend. He was feeling great happiness. You know why? He was watching football. Entonces, <laughs> este se da un ejemplo. Por ejemplo, yo estoy viniendo de Miami, tengo un amigo y le pregunté, y él me dijo que estaba en una gran felicidad. ¿Por qué? Porque estaba viendo el fútbol. But what is happening here? He is fixing his mind on one ball and just watching the ball <laughs> go Entonces, here and there for 90 minutes. He's concentrating for 90 So when you fix your mind on something, then the chitta starts to expand. Oh, I feel so good. Entonces, en este ejemplo, se dice que la mente se empieza a sentir bien cuando se enfoca, ¿no? Entonces, su amigo cuando dice que está contento porque ve el partido de fútbol, es que 90 minutos está concentrado en el balón, en la pelota, de que va y viene. Entonces, esta concentración hace que la mente se expanda. Then someone else will say, I feel happy when I eat ice cream. Otros pueden decir, ah, yo me siento feliz cuando como helado, cuando como Why? helado. Because they take the ice cream and, it, and they completely absorb themselves in tasting the ice cream. They forget what's going on over there and what's going on over there. They just absorb. So when you focus your mind, what happens? The chip just starts to expand. Entonces, otros que están tomando este helado se absorben tanto en, en degustar el helado que su mente empieza a expandirse y se olvida de todo lo que está aconteciendo alrededor. Simplemente están absorbidos en disfrutar el helado. But the problem is this. Because the expansion was caused by something external, which then, after a few minutes, goes away, then the chip just... Yeah. <laughs> collapses again. Entonces, cuando esta eh, chita, cuando la mente está absorta por algo externo, cuando esta cosa externa se termina, en este caso la lava se termina, la mente vuelve a tener ese bajón, porque la chita se vuelve a contraer. And then the person, they try, want to, again, but you cannot just eat ice cream all day. You cannot watch football all day. You, can, you cannot do it. Yeah. And, and so, Uh, because your body will become sick and so on. So what happens is when you try to expand the consciousness by focusing on sense gratification, then 
the result is you expand and then contract again. Suffering. And then you try again, and, but then it contracts even more and more and more. In the long term, it's the, you get more and more suffering instead of more and more happiness. Entonces, eh, si tú eh, eh, dependes de que tu chita se expanda en cosas externas, esto va a hacer que más bien al momento de terminarse, tu chita se vaya contrayendo más y más y ya en término largo tú vas a simplemente sufrir más porque estás dependiendo de algo externo para que se expanda tu chita. So, the result is that external gratification does not lead to happiness. Mm -hmm. It leads to slowly, slowly, your, even your ability to feel happiness goes down and Fiction. down. And that is the tragedy of modern life. Wow. Entonces, modern life is tragic, actually. Yeah. Entonces, ¿por qué no puedes, perdón, me había saltado, ¿por qué no puedes tú, por ejemplo, depender de una cosa externa constantemente? Porque no es que todo el día puedas tomar helado, no es que todo el día vas a ver fútbol porque te vas a enfermar. Entonces, esta es la tragedia de la sociedad moderna que no están dependiendo de cosas externas para sentirse felices. Pero en cuanto se acaban estas cosas externas, la chita se contrae más e incluso pierde la habilidad de poder expandirse o de poder sentir felicidad. So, the actual purpose of all yoga system and the purpose of all practice of religion is a way to slowly, slowly expand the chitta without any external stimulation. So you become situated in a very wholesome state of of uh, happiness, which is independent of the world. Entonces, el propósito de yoga o de las religiones que gradualmente tú puedas expandir esta chita sin necesidad de algo externo. So you can see that this theory of yoga has very massive implications for uh, society, for individual life, for education, Health. for law. Yeah. All, for, on all levels, if it can be applied on all levels of the human life, then everyone can be, have more healthy and a happy, progressive life. Entonces, si vemos esta teoría del yoga, es tan, eh, da tanto, eh, tantos beneficios a la sociedad actual, a la educación, a las leyes, en realidad a todo, los, a todo nivel humano nos proporciona este este conocimiento para sentirnos más felices de una forma mucho más integral. Uh -huh. Now, the question comes, what is making the, all of these are coming. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. So, what is making this, uh, the chitta move? Entonces, la pregunta viene aquí, ¿qué es lo que hace que la chitta se mueva? Just like in, in the ocean, the wind is blowing, so the wind makes some noise. Así como en el océano, el viento hace que se produzca el movimiento de las olas. So what is making the waves in your chita? Entonces, ¿qué es lo que hace que la, produzca las olas en tu chita? That is a pran. Es lo que es el pran. Mm -hmm. Pran. And why does it make particular kinds of waves in one person, but other types of waves in another person? ¿Qué es lo que hace que haya unas eh, olas particulares en una persona y otras olas particulares de otra persona? Uh, so the reason uh, that is called a samskar. Entonces la razón de esto se llama samskar. You see, every, everything that you do, everything that you do leaves impression in your subconscious mind. Entonces quiere decir que todo lo que tú haces deja impresiones en tu mente subconsciente. You know, if you, if you walk in the sand on the beach, then you can look and there's your footprints are there. Así como caminas en la playa, en la arena, puedes ver que tú dejas huellas. So everything that you have done in this life and in previous lives, the impression or recording of that is there in your subconscious mind. Entonces quiere decir que todo lo que tú has hecho antes en esta vida o en tus vidas previas quiere decir que ha dejado una impresión, una grabación en tu mente del subconsciente. So let's take this as the total chitta. Vamos a tomar esto como todo el total de la chitta. And we'll take uh, one part. This is your conscious mind. This is your subconscious mind. 
esta parte de abajo es tu mente consciente y la parte de arriba es tu mente subconsciente. Uh -huh. So in the subconscious mind there are some uh, uh, shapes. There are some shapes there in the subconscious mind. Hay algunas formas ahí en tu subconsciente. Uh -huh. And that's the impressions of all your past activities. Now, what happens is when you come into a situation, so you enter into any situation in life. Then that situation triggers the release of the impressions from the subconscious mind into the conscious mind. Let we can give an example. Let's say there's a young man and he sees one young woman. In his, he never associated with the woman, but in his last life there's some impressions from in his soul. So when he comes in contact with her, then from the subconscious mind, one of these impressions comes out into the conscious mind. And then that appearance of the impression from the subconscious mind into the conscious mind, that is what we call desire. Entonces, ese, ese movimiento, ese proceso de traer algo del subconsciente al consciente, nosotros lo llamamos deseo. So, every person they live in their life, they wake up, what will I do today? Entonces, cada persona en su vida, cuando se despierta, dice, oh, ¿qué voy a hacer hoy? One person thinks, I will go to the cinema. Una persona dice, voy a ir al cine. One other person, I will go shopping. Voy a ir a hacer compras. And everyone is thinking that I am choosing. Todos piensan que están eligiendo, que están decidiendo. But no one is choosing. Pero nadie decide. Only these samskars of previous activities from the subconscious are coming to the conscious mind. It comes there and, okay, now I'll do this. Now I'll do that. Entonces, solo significa que algo de tu subconsciente pasa, tu consciente, tu dices, oh, entonces voy a hacer esto, o voy a hacer esto. So, the, when we feel that we are independent and making all these choices, this is only uh, ego, actually. So, when a person does meditation, they can see how the samskaras impressions are coming from the subconscious to the conscious mind, and they don't follow them. Entonces, una persona que realiza meditación se da cuenta cómo de la parte del subconsciente sale al consciente y dice, bueno, entonces, pero esto no voy a seguir. Because to identify with the mind and just follow what echoes are there, the echoes of past activities coming into the mind, that means that that soul is completely under the control of karma. Entonces, cuando tú sigues esta impresión que viene de tu Uh -huh. And so what happens? Karma makes more karma, makes more karma, and there's a cycle, reincarnation, lifetime after lifetime. So in Bhakti Yoga, we don't follow the impressions of our own mind. But the spiritual master teaches us how to perform activities which are meant for the pleasure of God. And by doing this, instead of going on the karma is like a track, you know, a train cannot go anywhere. The train only goes on the track. So when we don't have control of our mind, we're like a train going on the track of our karma. But when we surrender to follow the teaching of the Guru, the spiritual master, then shh, we go off the track of karma and move towards our spiritual perfection. Mm. Entonces, ¿qué significa esto? Que cuando nosotros tomamos la instrucción del de, eh, maestro espiritual, entonces es como que nos salimos del karma, porque el karma es como una riela del tren. O sea, el tren va en una sola dirección y no puede, ir, no puede salirse de esta riela. Pero en cambio, la instrucción del maestro hace que tú dejes ese karma por el cual es el ejemplo del tren y las rieles entonces eh, 
So, and especially by the kirtan, singing the mantra of the holy names, then it cleans chaito darpan It cleans the chitta. Chaito darpan It's like cleaning the chitta. Entonces, eh, a través del kirtan, especialmente del canto de los mantras, uno limpia el chitta. And, and then when chitta is clean like a mirror, you can see your soul. And after that, you can see also uh, have the vision of God. Entonces, cuando limpias así tu chita, puedes es como un espejo limpio. Entonces, te puedes ver a ti mismo, puedes ver tu alma espiritual y así a Dios mismo. And also, all your dukkha. Y, y también todo no, tu dukkha, no, no. tu, 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 tu tristeza, tu sufrimiento también se va. Thank you very much. Ah, Thank you. So this was a brief introduction. Thank you. This was a introduction. This subject you have to learn in, in layers. One layer of understanding on top of another. Entonces este entendimiento tú tienes que realizarlo a través de capas una sobre otra. So we just have given the first layer. Entonces eso va a ser dado la primera capa. And if you go continue to study, then you come to the next layer and the next layer. And you have a marvelous picture of how the whole creation is going on. So if you attend our uh, uh, the rest of the course, we have two more lectures here. Then you also receive a certificate from our academy, Chaitanya Academy for the study of consciousness. Okay. And that you have done the basic course in understanding consciousness according to uh, Vedic literature. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Capítulo 4. Which are the powers of the fourth chapter? Cities. Four chapters. Oh, the, the powers are in the third chapter. Fourth chapter is Kaivalya Pada, and in the in the uh, third chapter it is the Bhuti Pada, the powers, yes. Okay, entonces en el tercer capítulo en realidad es el Bhuti Pada, que son de los poderes, porque el cuarto capítulo es Kaivalya, eh, el capítulo entonces so I'll give you a brief explanation of that you may remember we explained the yang, niyam, asana pranayama then pratyahara but then the last three are called dharana, dhyana and samadhi those last three taken together are called samyam so when a person uh, does samya, has these three levels of consciousness and directs it towards a particular object. Then the result takes place called samapati. Entonces el resultado de esta eh, concentración se llama samapati. So samapati means that the chitta itself transforms and becomes exactly like the object of meditation. Este samapati significa que la chitta se convierte igual que el objeto de lo que estamos meditando. And then you can get all knowledge about that object. Y así puedes obtener todo el conocimiento acerca de ese objeto. For example, potentially give some examples of uh, some devotees, cities. If you do samyam on the uh, navel chakra, manipura chakra, then uh, your chitta will transform into the shape of the of the body all the organs of the body and you get all medical knowledge. You know exactly how the stomach is working, the small intestine, the large intestine, 
all the biology of the body you can understand it by doing samyam on the manipur of chakra por ejemplo si tú haces un samyam o sea haces esta concentración profunda en el manipur chakra es decir en el ombligo tú puedes obtener poderes de medicina o sea sabes qué está pasando con tu intestino delgado intestino grueso con tu estómago so and similarly if you do samyam on the sun The sun is like the Manipura chakra of the universe. You can know all about the different uh, levels of the universe by doing samyam on the sun. Por ejemplo, también si tú haces samyam, es decir, samyam con el sol, tú puedes entender los diferentes niveles del universo. So, uh, if you do uh, samyam on your on your own chitta. Then you can see all the samskaras, impressions there, so you can look at the recordings of all your past lives. So this samyam is from the soul. No, sam no samyam means um, dharana, yam, and samadhi. It's these three stages of concentration, degrees of concentration. So the mind, the mind becomes the consciousness becomes like a laser, which is focused on this object or this object, and the chitta transforms and makes a model of that object, so you can understand it. Entonces cuando haces samyam de tu propia chita, pero hay que entender la técnica de usar samyam from all your own chita. Yes, yes. From where? Yes. Well, atma, the atma. consciousness is coming. The consciousness is coming from atma. None of the elements chita hamper. Then none of them are conscious. So it's always the consciousness, the light coming from the atma and illuminating different stages. So when it's only illuminating the ego. Then you, you can't even see what's going on in the chitta. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, doing samyam towards the uh, impressions in the chitta itself. Okay, entonces cuando haces samyam de tu propia chitta, tú puedes darte cuenta de todas las impresiones pasadas de tu subconsciente, mm -hmm. todo lo que tú tienes. Bueno. You can do uh, samyam on another person. Tú también puedes hacer also. samyam en de a, a otra persona. And read their mind. Y puedes leer su mente. Uh, And whatever you meditate on, you can take the qualities of that. So, for example, if you do the uh, samyam on a space, then you become lighter than air and you start to float. So the levitation is from the samyam on, on the akash. Si tú haces samyam del espacio, del éter, tú te vuelves liviano y empiezas a meditar. Lenta. Sometimes yogi becomes very strong by doing samyam on, on an elephant, and he gets the strength of an elephant. Así algunos yogis, por ejemplo, cuando hacen samyam de un elefante, entonces se vuelven muy poderosos. So in this way, whatever he turns his uh, samyam to, then he can learn about that and he can acquire the qualities of that object. So, for example, um, uh, visibility comes from light. So if the yogi will do samyam on the uh, element of fire, Then he can control the element of fire, and then he uh, becomes invisible because his body is not uh, reflecting light anymore. Because that element of fire is in charge of the reflection of light from his body. So by doing samyam on the fire element, he can become invisible. Entonces, si hace samyam, por ejemplo, de fuego, entonces él se vuelve invisible. ¿Por qué? Porque lo que evade la luz, es decir, lo que lo que te hace visible es que tú estás dando la luz. So uh, these things they sound very fantastic. But it is, it's not um, a sentimental idea. It is completely uh, uh, coherent with the uh, how can you say the cosmology, the explanation of the elements of the universe given in the Vedas. Pero es en realidad todo esto es una explicación, es una cosa coherente de toda la explicación de los elementos que da y los ve. In other words, even if you cannot do it yourself, but you could understand, given that cosmological system, the possibility that it can be done. 
Entonces, aunque tú no lo puedes hacer, todo este sistema de cosmología hace que tú mm, entiendas que sí se puede hacer. Now, one very nice example is given. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Un ejemplo voy a yeah. dar. In the commentary is, let's say, a person is practicing archery. Vamos a decir que una persona está practicando arquería. So to become a very good archer, first of all, they aim at a big target. Para volverse un gran arquero, tienes que encontrar tu objetivo. And as they develop the skill, they aim at smaller and smaller targets. Y así cuando vayas desarrollando estas cualidades de arquero, vas a ver que tu objetivo se va haciendo más pequeño, más pequeño, más pequeño. Until they're so expert, they can shoot a very small target from far away. Y así un gran experto de arquerismo puede ver un, un objetivo muy pequeño a gran distancia. So, this Vibhuti Pada, about the cities, it's not about gaining cities, but it's about uh, meditating on a gross object, then something more subtle, and then something more subtle, and something more subtle, and slowly, slowly, until you come to the finest point to know your own soul. Entonces, este Vibhutipara mm -hmm. quiere decir que no, eh, no es algo que tú vayas a, a obtener, que no es una ganancia, sino es que tú vayas concentrándote de lo, de lo más burdo a lo más, 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 mm -hmm. más útil. Yeah, so it should, it, it should not be misunderstood that the yogi is doing the yoga to get the cities. That's just like the cities is the side effect of target practice. He's doing the targets, focusing on the targets, smaller, 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 and he's slowly becoming expert until he can become absorbed in understanding his soul. Entonces, un yogi que está practicando, él va viendo que la perfección de sus prácticas a través de que su objetivo se va haciendo mucho, mucho más pequeño hasta encontrar el objetivo final de su alma. Another nice point, which is very nice, that um, the name for God in Sanskrit is Bhagavan. Bhagavan means God. Entonces, otro ejemplo es que el nombre de Dios también se dice es Bhagavan. And the definition of God is Aishwarya Sya, Sumatra Sya, Virya Sya, Yasasa Sya, Gyan Vairagya Sya, Rasanapaya, Itingana. Which means the first quality of God is that he has Aishwarya, that actually means he has all yoga cities naturally. Entonces, su significado de Bhagavan es Aishwarya, que significa que tiene naturalmente estos cities, estos poderes. So, of the eight main yoga cities, the first one is Anima. Entonces, de los seis tipos de yoga, el primero es Anima. It means to become smaller than an atom. Significa volverse más pequeño que un átomo. El primero de los poderes. The next one is Mahima, to become bigger than the universe. El siguiente poder es convertirse en lo más grande, más grande que el universo. And then Garima, to become the heaviest. En volverse el más pesado. And Lagima, to become the lightest. En volverse el más liviano. Prapti, to attain anything you want. Prapti quiere decir que alcanza todo lo que quiere. So, like this, these are the yoga cities. So, a yogi can develop them to some degree by very hard practice. But who is God? God is that person who has all the cities without any effort at all, naturally. Entonces, un yoga, un yogi puede esforzarse para obtener algo de estos cities, de estos poderes. Pero en esta definición, Dios es la persona que tiene naturalmente todos estos poderes, sin ningún esfuerzo. So, God is in every atom. And at the same time, all the universes are within him. So he's the smallest and the greatest. Whatever he desires, it becomes the reality. So the yoga cities are also an interesting way of thinking about the theology. Who is God? Entonces estos yogis eh, practicantes también están interesados en la parte teológica de quién es Dios. Because any power that any individual has, that was a gift because that was given by God, so God has all powers. Entonces porque todo poder adquirido por estas entidades es dado por Dios, entonces Dios mismo 